Hi folks, I know it's been a little while since we've got a video out, so I wanted to show you kind of what I've been working on for my stream. Um, you might want to adapt it yourself. Uh, basically, I wanted to create a, a more of a seamless system for our stream labels. Things like follow goals or the new subscribers, um, things that kind of clutter um, the stream up. I, I don't know if about you, but I'm tired of looking at streams that have all these names and labels up, and it just doesn't 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 flow right so what I wanted to do is create a rotating animated dynamic label that still conveys all that cool information but in a way that makes your stream look a little bit cleaner and a little bit more professional so that's what we're gonna be looking at on the stream today well, let's go take a look at our video Hi folks, welcome to our YouTube series. Here's where we tell you whatever we can to help you out for your stream, whether it's audio, video, or even brand. I'm your man, The Argument Mock. Um, if you haven't done so already, help me out on a subscription on the YouTube side. That way you can keep caught up with anything new that we have coming out. And if you haven't uh, known this already, I also stream quite often on Twitch. You're welcome to jump in, ask me any sort of stream-related questions, um, or even game with me. It's always a good time. Now, with that said, today's video is going to be a little bit of a mouthful. I do want to jump straight into it, but I also want to recommend you checking out some of our previous videos. That's going to help you kind of transition into that and that's going to be our motion source plugin video and also our Leonin board installation video if you haven't seen those you definitely want to go check those out and then come back because we're going to be using those in today's video let's go ahead and jump over the stream pc so we can start talking about what we're actually talking about there we go all right stream pc over here um so uh, i'm going to jump over into like my gaming rig um, so I'm going to showcase basically what we're talking about before um, I kind of show you step by step how to do it. Uh, so we'll just jump over to stream rig. Um, and this is kind of what I have for my stream rig. There's usually a few other things fired off. But again, I wanted to kind of streamline it and make it look clean so you can kind of see what we have going on. Um, so in the middle of our, our stream right around here on my overlay, I have this like little white spot. And for the longest time... I've thought about putting things like labels on there, but it's just too small and I can only fit one thing. And so a lot of times I have all these little text scrolling across the sidebar and it just didn't look good. Um, so I wanted to create something where if I, by the click of the button um, or with uh, my Leoran board, I can have something like my newest bitch here pop out in the center with this nice little animated pop in. And then after a little bit of time um, goes by, designated for whatever you want, it will kind of go back in there. Now, what I've done is I created that to show up quite a few different stream labels. You can kind of do as many of them as you want. Um, and I've rotated them in there so it kind of fires off automatically or by a button click on my side. So it all kind of depends on what you want to do with it. The great thing about this is it kind of cleans the stream up, but still has some of that relevant information that says, guess what? I still wanted to acknowledge these supporters and at the same time, uh, acknowledge that support helps, you know, whatever you want to call it. So it makes it look clean, makes it look like dead dynamic. And I'll kind of show you how I did that on the stream today. Okay. All right, so I'm back over on our stream PC. There's a few things that you want to get in order for this to work. We need to have some sort of overlay component. Uh, we need to have our stream label itself, basically getting us our data, and then um, some sort of text element identifying that data. Now, you could go over to stream elements itself and pull up your dashboard and, and go in there and make your alerts. That's probably the easiest way. Streamlabs and other ones have different types of labels um, f systems as well. So let me pull in um, stream elements. I'm literally just loading up my labels um, elements, which I use as a browser source. Um, if you're not familiar with stream elements, this is pretty easy to do. Um, you can go in there and, and make a new um, label on there. And literally I just have like all my rotators. So let me make this nice and big. So I have um, a label for my latest subscribers, recent subscribers, latest cheers. You can even go in here and make things like subscriber goals and things. And so what I'm going to end up doing is using this um, browser source as basically like my um, my label source. So you need to have that set up on there. Again, go into stream elements, make a label, a label source. And all I did was just make a bunch of labels. Uh, depends on what you want to use. You don't need to use them all. You can use a couple of them. The more you use, you can get a little clustered. I don't know. It depends on what you want to do for your stream. 
Um, so I went ahead and brought that in as a browser source over here. I have all my labels. It's kind of hard to see because it's got that transparent background. So I just have a label source over there of all the rotating labels. Um, I also have a text field source. Um, this is just basically uh, some dynamic text that I made in um, another program and brought it over. And it's just kind of flashing new subscriber, recent subscriber, top gifts and such. Um, I have an old overlay that I made, uh, used. This is a very old overlay and, um, you can use any overlay that you want, um, as long as it fits your theme. And I just, I'm using this one for purpose. In fact, what we'll probably do is I'm gonna use alt and I'm going to crop off the bottom and I'm just going to use this field right here. Um, I'll make it fairly big. Uh, holding shift and make it fairly big so I can put like new subscriber on the top and then the name on the bottom This little hash on the side kind of looks a little unappetizing, but you know Use what you need for it um, You can there's lots of different overlay components that you can use and then and this is will work for demonstration purposes So the first thing we need to do is find a spot for it I'm gonna pop it right kind of in the middle ish maybe just up a little bit so it's not covering all the buttons for us um, I probably wouldn't realistically put it there, but I just wanted to show you kind of what you can do with animated dynamics. So I'm just going to put it there so it's not covering some of these other buttons so you can see what we're doing on the stream. Uh, you're going to, make, going to make some move source plugins. I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit filters. I already kind of populated a bunch of these, so I'll let you know what I did and you can kind of follow along with it. Let me move it time. Let's move it up above. I'm trying to get this so you can see what's going on. Maybe we'll move it to the left here. Okay. All right, so um, we have, I have a, an L up, an L down. I just abbreviating label up, label down. Um, this is a move source plugin. So what I did was I just went in here. I'm just going to delete it. I'll make a new one. I'll call it a new filter. Um, basically on your scene, right click filters, move source. Again, watch my move source plugin video if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to label this one L up. This is going to be our transition spot for when the label is on the screen or up. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to um, find the source. I think it's called overlay, something like that. And then I'm going to get this transform. And then I'm going to make the duration probably a little bit bigger, probably one and a third second there. It's really important that that start trigger is on enable when the eye icon is in front of the filter. That way when it's off screen and we toggle the eye on, it will move in for us. And that will work for what we're, our purposes are today. Um, so when it's off screen, that's going to be this L down. I've already kind of set it up with the transform name. I'm just going to get its current transform. So again, when this one moves up, that one's going to move it out. Okay. And we're just going to use Lorian board or your stream deck to toggle these filters off and on. Um, similarly, um, you're going to want to do the same type of transform with your text elements. So I have my label element here. Um, so I'm going to want to get, let's get the first one there it's, uh, and we'll grab this one. We'll make it probably a little bit bigger to, to fit what we need here. And we're going to find a good spot for it. Again, use, I'm, I would be a little bit more in particular if this is going to be my permanent one, but I'm just using this for an example. And the great thing about having this one source is I can just go down and grab these other one. And then each um, each of my filters, I would get a transform for every single one. So you're going to need a transform for every label that you want. One for subscriber, one for newest followers. You know, every single one, you're going to get its own new transform. I'm going to go back in there underneath scenes, filters. And this one, I think I labeled as label newest subscriber. Um, and then I'm going to get this transform. And then I want to make sure that it's also toggled with that start trigger. And then I'll do is um, actually, you know what? I'm going to make the uh, the duration the same one and a third second. And then I'm going to push this one off screen. And I'm hoping that I got it right around the same spot. And I also made this other one that says label a new subscriber down. And that's going to be when it's off screen. So it's off screen now. So I'll get the transform. And again, it's star triggers the right one. I'll need to do that also for my uh, text field. So let me bring up my text field. That's these guys over here. I'm gonna hold Alt, and I wanna get just that newest subscriber. I'm gonna pop it into place. 
I'll use shift to make it, you know, kind of fit a little bit what we need. Again, kind of depends on what you want to do. I have a text field here that says uh, text new sub. That's this one here, making sure the source is named the same source. I'm going to get that transform. If you want, and this is what I did on my other scene, is I made my scale 000, and that will shrink it to nothing, but you can still have it visible, and that works really great with browser sources, because browser sources don't like to be toggled all the way off um, all the time. But I'm going to use this as a slide in, slide out type of a source. I'll make the duration um, one, and a th one and a third, and enable when an icon is there, and then I'll slide it off to the side again. I don't know if that's exactly where it is supposed to be. Again, I'll probably would have to sit there and, and math it out, um, but I'm not doing that right now. And then I also have this one that says text down. I'm gonna get that transform. And right now I think I have it sliding in at um, 1300 milliseconds. I have it sliding out at 300 milliseconds, I believe. So we'll let's go ahead and bring these all up, if that makes sense. Up, up and up and just a little bit off pace so let me take this one here and retransform it and then the goal and i can't do this fast because i'm a human is to click these all basically at the same time we have the down down and the uh down and now this will all kind of be one asset so let's go to lowering board and, and do that real fast all right, so we're going to go ahead and go into Lorian board and we want to program that functionality for us so that trigger always happens at the same time, which makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to go into an open space here. I'm going to create a new button. I'm not going to label it. I'm going to end up deleting it at one point, but we're just going to get in there and do these commands. We'll edit, add new commands, hit the plus button. What we're looking for is a filter source visibility. So filter change visibility. Uh, the source name is the scene that you are manipulating in so for me it's something record something something that's the scene that we're in the filter name is the source that we need to trigger so the first thing we need to do is make them all visible to so they show up and then the way that lower and board works is it's on a toggle so i could do this as a toggle or i could do this as an off on so we're going to do uh l up and i'm going to go ahead and you know what let's go ahead and do this as a toggle Nah, we'll do this as a true just to make it easier for us to, to think about it copy this we'll paste this uh, we need to do um, that a new subscriber and we need to do also the the text new the text sub so these are all going to come out at the same time um, and then um, we need to also turn them off so we're going to copy these copy selected, paste them, and then I'm going to turn it as a false, and I'll turn it false after like, I don't know, one second. That way, if you turn it false too fast, it doesn't actually have a chance to animate. Technically, this should be at least 130, because that's my animation in time, if that makes sense, because if you turn it off too fast, it won't fully animate. All right, so we'll hit done. So this button will slide everything out and then I'm going to take this button. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to edit these, this one. And what we need to do is now toggle them. Um, the other things to slide them that do the slide off our go, go away function, which is the, the down, the subscriber down, the text down, and then that will toggle them out to be off screen, but then we have to also turn them off. So we'll do the um, L down again, the newest sub down, and the text sub down. I know that's a lot of repetitiveness, but um, basically the way it works is on a toggle. So we have to toggle it back to false before it's ready to go again. So this should work for us. I'm gonna hit done. I'm gonna actually minimize that. I'm gonna bring my stream deck out by itself. Cover my face a little bit on the other side. We'll bring this over. Now I still have that left side kind of available for us to see. And hopefully I program this right. We'll hit that first button. It all slides in. We'll move this off just, you know, I'm gonna move this on the other screen. Ah, that's, that's good enough. And then I'll hit this other button and it should slide 
should slide off. I think I toggled it wrong. Up. Off. Okay. So maybe I just didn't hit it fast enough or didn't give it enough time. So that's the whole premise of what we need to be doing for it. But we need to do that for every single text field. So if you have like, again, this, we just did this for subscriber. We'll need to populate in doing its own transform for, you know, a newest follow or a recent cheers or whatever you want to do. And that's what this system is down here for. So let me show you back into game mode what I did. And you can kind of copy and paste what we, uh, whatever you want on it and kind of have it do it automatically for us using right. So I'm back on Lorian board again. And what it is, I, I kind of made OBS half the screen. I, it's hard to see everything in one spot, but I want you to kind of follow along what I did. Now, try not to pay attention to too many these extra crazy buttons um, each of these kind of violet buttons is basically a function where it says bring the asset out that's the labels that's the text and that's also the actual um, overlay itself bring it into play um, wait some time and then shrink it that's what all these function in so I'll go ahead and open one of these to so you can see it we have um, change the visibility make it true after some time, make it false. That's that toggle function that we're talking about. Um, so this is basically my my label itself, the overlay, the text for it, and also the text from the label from the um, from Steam elements. After some time goes by, I go ahead and toggle those back where it goes away, and then toggles those back off so it's ready to go and fire for the next one. After everything is said and done, I press this button, and that creates an automatic loop for me. And the way I did my automatic loop. Um, I use a toggle variable. Um, I just said is if S equals one, let's go ahead and turn the system on and then press the toggle button. Um, that way I can turn it off if I want to. Um, and then in this looping function, you can do it by sequence. You can do whatever you want. I did it by randomizing. So what I did was I created a random variable. Um, you, we know I gave it a number one through 12, depends on how many of these types of labels you have. If you have five, you might need one through five. It kind of depends on how many you need. And then I basically skip if, or um, skip if not equal to that number. So it basically will randomize all of those things and hit the appropriate button. Again, you can get button ID from these. So here's how the function works. I'm gonna hit green equals go. It's gonna to toggle my variable to say, yes, it's green. Let's go ahead and go. It's gonna hit my loop button, give it a random button. Uh, random variable which hits one of these random buttons it does its functionality and then loops back in and it happens automatically for us so let's go ahead and bring this to full screen and i'll bring over my stream deck i'm going to hit green equals go and then i'm going to go ahead and move this guy off to the side here for us and it should be kind of going automatically for me. Now I timed mine, um, it looks like I missed one little spot there, I'll go and clean that up, but I timed mine kind of based on what is being displayed. Um, if there's a lot of information, like this one is um, more than one person, it might go up there for 10 seconds and 20 seconds. You could actually randomize your times if you want to, and then I wanted to clean up and be off screen for at least 10, sometimes 20 or 30 seconds, so it, has a little bit more of a, a kind of natural random vibe to it. So it's not taking too much of the screen up, but also randomly does its thing on its own. So you can see it just closed itself again, and then it's gonna pick another ticket here in probably like five seconds at random. It could do the same one twice, I don't know. The good thing about it though is um, it, it basically will do it for me automatically, which is kind of kind of cool. All right, so that's gonna be it for the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and DM me and ask away. I'm always around to help you out and I'll see you glitches on the next video. Be safe out there. doing work.